Hi, my name is Savinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel where we learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I want to teach you the Dune, Ixians, and Kleenaxu House expansion. An expansion that introduces two new factions and a new mechanism. For the base game rules, watch my other videos. Now, what I love in this expansion is the variety it introduces and the new ways to win the game while still remaining true to the base game. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button. It helps a lot. This expansion of Dune introduces the Ixians and the Tleilaxu factions. These are mortal enemies, but they do add to the economy of Dune, which in essence allows more spice to be produced. The Tleilaxu are led by a small council of Tleilaxu masters. Although fanatic and xenophobic, Tleilaxu were tolerated because of their useful genetic engineering superiority. Every time a faction pays to revive forces, they collect the spice. They also gain three traitor cards at the beginning of the game and use them in a very powerful way. And finally, their Zol leader can match the other leader it faces in battle. The Ixian, or the royal family of Ix, once one of the wealthiest, are led by the cyborg Prince Romba of House Vernius. They can manufacture wonderful technology and they pretty much oversee the tech available to other players. They also have stronger cyborgs and weaker suboids. I'll start by explaining the new game mechanics this expansion adds to the base game and then I'm going to delve into the advanced rules for each faction. With this expansion, like with the base game, you still have 10 turns to win the game, but now you can also win by using new tech tokens. Technology tokens allow the faction who owns them to gain more spies through specific industry. There are three tech tokens and each works in a different way. The Axolotl tanks allows the player to collect one spice per tech they control if at least one faction takes a free revival. The only exception is if the Tleilaxu are the only faction to take free revival. The Highliners allows the player to collect one spice per tech they control if at least one faction ships forces from off-planet. The only exception is if the Spacing Guild is the only faction to ship forces from off-planet. The Spice Production allows the player to collect one spice per tech they control if at least one faction takes Chome Charity. The only exception is if the Bene Gesserit are the only faction to take Chome Charity. At the beginning of the game, by default, the Tleilaxu take the Axolotl tanks, the Ixians take the Highliners, and the Fremen take the Spice production. As you can see, they match the colours. If, however, any of these factions is not playing, after the Storm token is moved at the start of the game, control of unassigned tech tokens is given randomly according to turn order. During the game, the tech tokens are won through battle. You take the token from the defeated faction. If they have more than one, then you pick the one you prefer. For winning conditions, controlling all three tech tokens count as a stronghold for winning the game. So two strongholds and three tech tokens can win a game. For this, all three tech tokens must be controlled by the same faction. Allies cannot share control of tech tokens. In this expansion, there are 30 new cards, all marked with a tech token symbol in the bottom left corner. Some of the most exciting ones are the new treachery cards. All these are the new treachery cards in this expansion. These are very similar to the base game. The new ones are the ones here and here. Now let's have a look at this one. This one basically lets you decide whether you want to use this card as a projectile defense or a projectile weapon. This one here lets you decide if you want to use it as a poison defense or a poison weapon. This one here will let you decide if you want to use it as a projectile defense or a poison defense and this one does the same but you decide whether it's a, a weapon projectile or a poison these essentially kill both leaders these are super cool uh it brings a sandworm this one this one will basically take uh, half the spice from a player's reserve and this one will double the amount of spice during the spice flow there's also a cool new spice card and that is the sand trout. It is pretty much like an anti-nexus because it cancels all alliances. In addition to that, it will cancel the next Shai Hulud. So instead, it could double the amount of spice coming after the cancelled Shai Hulud. 
Apart from the standard traitor cards for each faction, there's also a cool new one. Now you can play a cheap hero traitor card that would dispatch cheap heroes. Also add the standard alliance cards and prediction cards as needed. These are all the new components of the base game, and with this it plays exactly like the standard Dune base game. Now let's have a look at some faction specific components and rules, starting with the Ixians. The Ixians rely on technology and they start with a decent amount of spice, but with weaker troops. They can only revive one force for free. They have two types of troops. First are the 13 Suboid forces. They are worth half the strength in battle. When using them, dial on the half mark of the wheel as needed. You can also use the Suboids to absorb loss after a battle. Any surviving Suboid force surviving in the territory can be replaced by cyborgs you've lost in that battle. In this example, the Ixians need to lose a strength of four. Two for the cyborg and one, two for these four Suboids. Now they have one surviving Suboid, so they can exchange it with that cyborg. So in the end, they would have only lost two and a half strength. The Ixians have seven cyborgs and each has a strength of two in battle. They can also move two territories. Suboids that are with them also move two instead of one. Cyborgs can carry three spies, while suboids carry the standard two. They would carry four and three respectively if the Ixians also occupy Carthag or Arakeen. Ixians have one free revival. After that, cyborgs cost three spies to revive, while suboids cost the standard two spies. Now both cyborgs and suboids ship normally and at the normal cost. Another really cool thing with the Ixians is their hidden mobile stronghold. Just after the first storm movement, the Ixian place their mobile stronghold on a territory pointing at the sector it occupies. It cannot already have a stronghold. Then, before the storm is dialed, as long as forces occupy the stronghold, it can move up to three territories. When you move into, through, or from a sector that contains spice, immediately collect two spice per force in the mobile stronghold. Also, no other faction can ship forces directly into your hidden mobile stronghold. Other factions must move or ship forces into the sector it is pointing at, including the polar sink, and then use a movement to enter. Note that even if it is captured, no other faction can move the hidden mobile stronghold. Finally, the Ixians have some pretty cool ways to deal with treachery cards. At the start of the game, before the treachery cards are dealt, the Ixian looks at all the treachery cards which were to be distributed, picks one, and randomly distributes the other treachery cards to the other players. This way, they pick the best and also know all the cards already in play. Also, before the bidding phase starts, the Ixian draws one more treachery card and looks at all of them. The Ixian then selects one card and places it either at the bottom or the top of the deck. They then shuffle all the other cards and build a deck, ready for the bidding phase. Finally, in an alliance, after an Ixian's ally purchases a treachery card, they may immediately discard it and draw the top card from the treachery deck instead. Now let's look at the basic elements of the Tleilaxu. They start with no troops on the planet and they start with five spice, so they need to buy their time. In the meantime, they collect spice when other players revive and they can use their face dances. They're also able to revive up two forces for free. At the start of the game, once all players have discarded their unused traitor cards, shuffle the deck and take the top three cards. These are called face dancers, as they can change their face and take on the physical appearance of other leaders. They are a little like traitors, but not quite. After another faction has won a battle, sent forces to the tanks, collected spice and tech tokens as appropriate, the Tleilaxu can reveal a face dancer card. The face dancer leader is sent to the tanks if it wasn't already killed, but no spice is collected for it. Instead, all winning forces remaining in the territory are sent back to their reserve and are replaced by Tleilaxu forces. These come from either the reserves or from anywhere on the planet. Once revealed, you cannot replace a face dancer until all three have been placed in the tanks. At this point, place all three cards back into the unused traitor deck, shuffle and take the top three cards. 
If you want to replace one face dancer from your hand, wait until the Mentat face. Place it in the unused Traitor deck, shuffle, and take the top card. Where the Tleilaxu earn most of their spice is during the revival phase. For any faction using a Gola card or free revival, the Tleilaxu takes one spice from the bank. If a faction wants to revive a leader before all its five leaders are in the tanks, they can negotiate with the Tleilaxu. If they agree, they can revive that leader. Tleilaxu can also increase the revival limit of other factions to five. Finally, in an alliance, Tleilaxu can revive the allies' forces and leaders at half price, rounded up. The Tleilaxu have a leader with no fixed value. Zol matches the value of the opponent's leader, or zero against a cheap hero. Now let's look at the advanced rules for each faction, starting with the Ixins. In the advanced game, once during the bidding phase and before the Atreides check the card, the Ixians can take the top card from the deck and replace it with one from their hand. You can take the treachery card about to be bid on and replace it with one from your hand. The Ixian Karama power allows them to move their mobile stronghold to territories on their turn. Finally, the Suboid strength can never be upgraded in battle using spice. They are always considered half strength. Now, let's have a look at the advanced rules of the Tleilaxu. When the Tleilaxu have less than five leaders, they can revive leaders from other factions at the discounted rate. So, the Tleilaxu can pay four spice to revive this leader from the tanks. Also, the Karama power allows them to block a player from performing a revival of either forces and leaders. Now, my tips to win at this beautiful expansion are... So the Ixian stronghold is very good at chasing leftover spice, so it's essential to safeguard it. A good strategy for the Ixians is to chase those tech tokens because it guarantees income and it's a, it's a lot more fun, the game. It's a really good idea to cycle through face dancers during the Mentat phase so that you have the ones you want. The odds are that you most probably play your face dancers once, maybe twice if there's a lot of battles. Make sure to use them when you can. So that's how you play this great Dune expansion. The new text, the moving stronghold, the new cards, all add a lot of cool new options beyond the two new factions to create new stories of Dune. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.